What's up, everybody? It's Ty the Bourbon Guy, and welcome to the 25 Days of Whiskey. Today is day five. So, <laughs> for those keeping track, this is the fifth day, and I have been kind of explaining my bourbon journey along the way so far. So, of course, as I'm sure everybody has in their whiskey journey, we are here with none other than Blanton's Single Barrel. <laughs> the very first single barrel. So, Blanton's, I'm sure, if you know anything about bourbon or whiskey or anything that you've, I'm, I'm sure you've seen this name pop up, right? Blanton's is one that has come up and it has become the whiskey that people are chasing and you feel like you have to have in your collection and all this other stuff, right? That, I would say Blanton's and Pappy are probably the two uh, very well-known names. For me, in my bourbon journey, the very first distillery I ever you know, visited years ago was Buffalo Trace. And within there, after the tour, uh, you know, I didn't really know anything about Buffalo Trace at that time. Uh, I knew Eagle Rare. I loved Eagle Rare at the time. I go to the gift shop and they have Blanton's just sitting <laughs> there in the gift shop. And so I end up getting a bottle and, you know, enjoy it. But at the time, I'm thinking, man, this is like a fancy bottle, right? So I'm going to, you know, leave it sealed up and, and uh, just let it sit for a special occasion. A buddy of mine comes into town and I buy some Jim Beam for us to mix and, and do all that stuff with. Well, we finished the bottle of Jim Beam. <laughs> we were having a good time. And he says, well, you have more bourbon. Let's just open this up. I don't know what in the world I was doing, but I should have never left him unsupervised. <laughs> but I came back and he had opened my bottle of Blanton's, dumping it in a cup, dumping Coke in there and just mixing it all up. And he was having a great time, but I wasn't. So <laughs> I think, uh, you know, for me at that time, that just kind of taught me there will always be another bottle, right? Like, so now that that's just a funny story for me to tell, uh, and I'm sure everybody's kind of had a moment like that, maybe, maybe, or maybe I'm just, you know, have loser friends, but, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's one of those whiskeys that, uh, I just, I wanted that special occasion to open this and to do this. And what I learned later on in my whiskey journey is that was the special occasion. That is it. To have a moment in time with my best friend and to open this bottle and enjoy it and to have this story now for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'm going to always tell people that he dumped the whole thing of Coke in my Blanton's and all this other stuff. Um, but I realized later on that is the moment. That is part of your journey. That is um, what these bottles are meant to do and, and what they're meant to be. So a lot of times people say open your bottles and I 100% I understand that. But I also understand waiting for certain occasions. Um, I've always said that if it's just me at my house, I'm not going to necessarily open everything. But when people come over, they know that they can, they are welcome to anything in my bar, um, open anything and let's enjoy it. Now, if you want to just dump Coke in it, let's go find something else <laughs> besides my blends. But uh, this is the, the horsey bourbon or whatever you want to call it, um, where the tops spell out blends if you collect them all. So I think this has become just one that everybody hunts, right? And it is a great bottle. It, at the time, was about $60. So I would say with the cost of everything going up, I mean, my eggs are like $60 now, so. <laughs> but I would say that anything sub $100 is fair. Um, still marked up, yes, but I think that's a fair price. Anything over that, I feel like they're just taking advantage of the hype and, and taking advantage of you as a consumer. So I wouldn't recommend it over $100, but that's just my own, my own personal thing. I've seen so many people pass up on amazing bottles and it's just to get a Blanton's. I've seen, I've been at different events or raffles or whatever the case is where you have a chance to, to pick different whiskeys and there's, there's all these other ones that are amazing whiskeys uh, and, and people will pass on that to get a bottle of Blanton's. Blanton's is attainable. For sure, you can find it if you if you work hard enough, you'll find it. Um, but it's it's just like anything that you you do all this, you spend all this time at the hunt, and I I am one that can respect a, a good whiskey hunt. But you finally get it, and you're just like, and especially if you pay more than retail for it, you really kind of feel disappointed by it. Um, so I would say if you if you're in a position where you happen to come across it at a decent price and you buy it enjoy it. It is a, it is a good whiskey. Nobody, I don't know if anybody that has ever said it's a bad whiskey, 
But I think when you get a chance to try some very unique single barrel products, whether that's store picks or whatever the case is, you'll start to see that there's a lot out there, not only whiskey in general, that, that could be better than this bottle, but the uniqueness of a single barrel uh, private select of these different brands can compete 100%. So, but I also understand <laughs> you have to have it in your collection and it with this time of year, it is gifted quite a bit. So I understand, I, I get it. Uh, my only thing is, like I said, if you, one, try it before you buy it, uh, if you're planning on spending a crazy amount of money on it, um, that would be my one thing, is just make sure that that's 100% what you want beforehand. But either way, enough talking, let's get into it. This is a sweet, softer, more approachable bourbon. Has a little bit of a hug on there. The, the particular bottle that I'm drinking right now was a uh, selected bottle, a private select, single barrel, uh, from a local store pick. And so, and I trust their palate and really a, probably align with their palate more than anybody around my area. And uh, so, in my opinion, this is probably the best Blanton's bottle I have, but that's the, that's the fun in a single barrel is to be able to try it, uh, different barrels and see how they relate to each other, how they compare, and how they differ. Let's finish this one off. Cheers. A great bottle, very pretty bottle. We all know that much. Is it a good whiskey? Yes, absolutely. Uh, retails sixty dollars, but that was also years ago. I could see it now, maybe seventy-ish, eighty-ish, for sure. I think anything under a hundred is going to be uh, still very good. Um, I think going above and beyond that just would not be something I would want to do. Um, I think that this is a, a great bottle in terms of gifting. So for me personally, uh, there's been a few bottles that I've had that I've been able to, uh, you know, gift to, to other people and let them enjoy it. But, but again, my favorite thing really is when people come over to let them try Blanton's and then say, okay, here you go. Now let's go try this. Let's go try that. And let's go try this. I mean, that's to me the fun in it to be able to open people's eyes to other whiskeys out there. And at the time that I kind of got into bourbon, there, there, of course, was a lot out there, but not nearly like the amount of whiskey there is today. And now there are so many brands making so many amazing whiskeys, so unique from company to company and bottle to bottle. I mean, there's just so many unique products out there. There is definitely something for everybody out here. So I think given now the way that the market has gone and how much is out there, you definitely don't need to overpay for a little bottle with a horse on it. <laughs> but the more people talk about it, the more that people want it. And FOMO is real when it comes to bourbon. I appreciate you tuning in today to day five. I will see you tomorrow for day six, 25 days of whiskey. Cheers.